Okay, 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 I get it. I get it. Let's talk about it. Hey everyone, today we're gonna to be talking about how to make your stable diffusion animations look a lot more consistent, a lot smoother. There are two tricks that I use to accomplish this and I will share that with you today. I'm actually surprised that there aren't more people using this technique that I use because it's not really a secret. It's information that's out there, but it's uh, it's in two separate worlds. Um, there's the AI world and then there's the world of After Effects. And I use a little bit of both and put them together to accomplish those consistent and smooth animations. So today I'm not gonna talk about how to use Stable Diffusion. I'm gonna tell you more of the settings I use to accomplish the smooth and consistent animations. If you wanna learn more about the basics of how to use Stable Diffusion, you can watch my previous video. Uh, the link should show up on top. So if you've already seen that video, this is just a continuation of that. So open up the folder where you have all your frames for your video. I'm gonna be deleting every other frame. Uh, I'm sure there's a better trick to do this, but um, this is the way I do it, a little hack that I do. Uh, I uh, close the folder to a point where there's only two columns, and then I just get um, every odd number and just delete those. And so now you're stuck with only even numbers. And I'm gonna explain later on why we do this. It's a, it's a step that's really gonna help get that smoothness. And another benefit of deleting half of the frames is that it will generate the whole animation a lot quicker. So once you have that, open up Stable Diffusion like I did here. I'm just gonna put in the frame. I already got all the settings that I want beforehand, so I'll just generate this. So I already tested this and got some results that I will be using today. Um, one thing I will say is that uh, your footage does matter. If your subject is moving forward and back a lot, that might affect the consistency of your animation. The AI can't really follow and keep that consistency when there's like that moving uh, forward and back. So if you can keep the subject in uh, a certain position, that works. Uh, you can move side to side. It, it, I've tested that and it keeps good track of that, but I noticed that when someone moves uh, back, it definitely uh, changes the consistency. I'm gonna be using this animation. I shot this footage at a convention. So I put all the settings that I want. I put in the prompts, the negative prompts that I wanted. I did run this uh, through interrogate. Uh, this will be useful later, I'll tell you why. Um, because what this does, the AI will study what's in the image and they will try to describe what it sees. So right here it says a woman with green hair and gloves holding a dice and like all this is not accurate. You can correct these things or delete it. So you have to be very descriptive. Like if uh, this is obviously a younger woman, so you want to make sure you put young woman because then you might get some images where you have an older person. Um, and then uh, with green hair, holding hands, like, so I'm, I'm not going to use this. I'm just going to, whatever you get, if, if it's pretty accurate to what your, what your image is, then copy that. Copy that and I'm going to show you what, what you're going to do right now. Get the art style, put anime, mid, uh, mid journey art style. I used a, an art style that I got from AI Entrepreneur. And then as soon as you get all the settings, you get everything the way you want it to look. Then you're going to come down here and this is the part where it's going to help you keep the consistency. You come here, uh, make sure you have your seed uh, set, whatever style you want, you like. You're going to come down here to the bottom and then where it says script, you're going to click on image to image alternative test. And this is, um, this is really where you're going to paste the results from the interrogate that you got earlier from here. And then here, you're going to pretty much describe as accurately as possible what's happening in this screen. And the reason that is, is because uh, from what I understand, and please, please, I'm asking, I'm begging. If I'm describing this wrong and you know how this really works, please forgive me. I am more of a creative and really I just press buttons and switches and, <laughs> and then see what works. And then uh, sometimes I discover things by accident. Um, and sometimes uh, on purpose. So correct me, uh, just don't be uh, mean about it, all right? So I put this really high, like this doesn't really be, have, have to be this high. So what I what I see this as, from my perspective, what it, what it is, this gives you the style, right? Like you run this uh, with the denoising strength and the CFG scale, and you run it and you get the results right there. So what this basically does is it tames the beast, you know, like, this wants to go crazy, right? Like every every frame, it wants to do something different. It wants to give you different uh, looking results every single time. And from what I understand, this basically reels it back, it tames it, and it keeps it from going all wild. Um, and the higher the number, the the longer it will take to process and to generate, 
but it will give you the consistency that you're looking for. It will also change the way the image looks. It will make it a little bit more contrasted. Yeah, it will make some changes from my testing. The way to get the consistency is to really just follow the actual video as much as possible and then just add like a, an art style that that's a little more subtle because if you try to go wild and and have like add like armor and like wings and a fantasy world it it doesn't uh it doesn't stay consistent and it just goes a little kind of crazy um you can experiment uh i still uh, plan on experiment and seeing how far i can push it but for now to get started, this is a good way to start to get results that still looks like there's an art style, but it's close to the original footage. All right, so let's generate this. So I put it at 50 down here. Uh, I had put it at 100 because I believe uh, I wasn't getting the results that I wanted. The, the thing is that the higher you put it, the longer this will take. So I learned about this from Nerdy Rodent. So shout out to Nerdy Rodent. Um, go follow his page. Uh, he has some great content and always uh, talking about a lot of the latest stuff that's happening with uh, AI, especially now that there's uh, text to 3D now, and it's, oh man, it's crazy. Yeah, it, it didn't change it like super drastically, but it did change it enough to where it doesn't look an, exactly like it used to. Now, once you get something that just looks good, you, you mess around with this, right? You just mess around with this one. You want to leave this around one. This, you want, this is the decoding. This is uh, the one that you want to uh, push a little bit more um, you can either go 50 or 30 if, if whatever gives you the best results and also uh, what's going to affect your results is the denoising strength um, and also your prompts your prompts are you can change one word and suddenly your image looks so much better like so there's a lot of experimentation you can do um, honestly this for me it's not like the best results but uh, just for, for this tutorial I'm just going to stick with this and so we can get some results uh, quick uh, mess around with the prompts. Uh, sometimes your subject will be doing things that you really don't want, like opening their mouth or showing their teeth or showing this really awkward smile. Like right here, I put it in the negatives. I put uh, teeth and open mouth. And sometimes the eyes become like very big, especially if you're putting anime style, the eyes become way too big. And so that doesn't stay consistent through all, all the frames. Sometimes the eyes are bigger than uh, other times. So uh, you might want to put like uh, big eyes in the negative uh, prompt. So, so let's test out a different frame. So test out a, a frame that's uh, way different than what you used. So you want to see that like some frames at the beginning and some frames in the middle and some at the end are, are staying consistent with um, the results you initially got. And excuse my voice guys, I'm, a, I'm feeling a little sick. So I want you to pay attention to this frame and make sure that the next frame that this loads up will be very consistent to this style. Yeah. So it is pretty consistent. It looks different because it's a different angle of the face, but I can see that it's, it's, it's quite consistent. Once you get the consistency that you want and just messing around with the settings, come into your batch and you uh, export it. And uh, I had already, I already did this because I didn't want to go through this process of waiting. And so once the AI has generated all your frames, you might notice that uh, the frames are in even numbers because we had deleted every other frame. So a little trick that I, you can do is uh, if you select all of them, because you, you're going to have to do this and go to rename and then name it and then it's going to name it uh, and then number it in order. So now you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way to 42. So that's how that works. So I exported every frame into here. I uh, stretched it out to the, to the length of the video. And when you initially play it, it's going to look like this. And yeah, I mean, there is consistency, but it doesn't look like it's smooth. It looks kind of like, like a little bit stuttery. What you want to do is, and this is the, this is the second trick. So this is the first trick. The first trick is using the image to image alternative test. So the second trick you want to use is frame blending right here. If you click on this right here twice, it's going to do this to your footage. What I think happens here is since there is less frames to work with, um, there's two frames that are, stay the same. So it makes it look way more consistent. And with the frame blending, it just makes it look smoother. So there is image to image alternative tests and the frame blending. And the whole alternative test is nothing new. People know about this. But I think people typically what they do is that they run every single frame. And so when you do every single frame, it keeps the frames consistent. But since you have every frame, it's slightly, slightly different. And it just looks very jittery. There's a lot going on. Uh, this, since it has every other frame, you don't see that as much jitteriness in it. 
and it just makes it look a lot smoother. Let me show you an example of, of what I'm talking about when you do every single frame. So I ran this footage through the image to image alternative test, um, but I ran every single frame. And um, oh yeah, by the way, the, this is my wife and people keep asking who she is. Yeah, I mean, it looks consistent, right? But look at all the jitteriness. And that might be the look that you want. If that's what you want, then that's cool, right? But if that's not what you're going for, if you want it to be a little bit more, if you don't want as much jitteriness, you can do it the way I explained and just remove and just remove half of the frames. So yeah, that's how you get consistent and smooth animations. I, I really hope that you learned something. I hope this is helpful for a lot of people. I know that uh, a lot of people will start to use this technique. And so, you know, give me a shout out. Uh, let people know about where you got that information. Honestly, I would love to do this full time if I could, but I obviously need support. So please subscribe, share all that good stuff and like um, so that, you know, people can see more of my content. And I really appreciate everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. God bless. Peace.